And this Wednesday coming up is our last Wednesday here. This is our last Sunday. It's going to be by God's grace that we get finished. By next Sunday, if you haven't bought a chair, you're going to sit on the floor. Just be aware, we will have chairs. But again, the Lord knows what he's doing and why he's doing what he's doing. There was a group of people who signed up for a Good Samaritan training course. And normally I don't start my sermons out with an illustration like this, but the Lord put it on my heart on, on the way. He said, I want you to give them the Good Samaritan illustration. I said, okay. So a group of people went to Good Samaritan training. And part of their training, they had to go to a college dorm at 2 o'clock on Saturday to have their Good Samaritan training. Well, if you can imagine, Saturday morning they woke up and they got themselves ready and they had breakfast and they had lunch and they had to get ready because they knew they had to be there by 2 o'clock. So they went and they made their way and as they were going, as, as they were parking and walking up, there was a man on a bicycle on the ground. And as they walked up, they saw a sign that said, the Good Samaritan training has been moved a half a mile to the other location with a map. So they grabbed the map and they all went on to get to their Good Samaritan training because they didn't want to be late. And so they went and they had their Good Samaritan test and after it was all said and done, they got a letter in the mail telling them that they got their grade back and they all failed. The Good Samaritan test was the man on the bike. They didn't help him. They were so worried about Going over there, they forgot about why they were sent. Do you know why you're here? To take care of all those that he brings your way. Each one of us has a group of people that he brings. Not all of our people are the same. Trust me, the people that God bring me, which is you, they're out of here. They're weird, man. <laughs> they just lost it. But those that God brings you is your own core. As I told you, Sparta Bible Church is not just here. Sparta Bible Church travels all over the world. And they travel in all of your homes. And you represent God and you represent Sparta Bible Church. So as you go around town and people see who you are and see what you do, you represent the church. But not just Sparta Bible Church, but the church of Jesus Christ. And you either attract people to the gospel and to his truth, or you detract them to the world. That's my challenge for you today. You are the fifth gospel, and people read you every day. The question is, what do they read? As we go into this new location, he's going to put, he's going to bring people in your life who you're going to be able to invite. Do we bring the new business cards yet? Do you know? We got new business cards with a new address. I have one box on my desk. The good news is we'll have them Wednesday night. Last Sunday, we started on the 40 grace gifts that God gives us at the moment of salvation. Unfortunately, we only got to three. But it certainly beats our progress in Genesis, doesn't it? <laughs> but the teaching on Genesis is great. It's just the beginning. In the beginning. In the beginning. I'm going to cover the first three for review, in case you weren't here. There are 40 things that God gives us at the moment of salvation. These 40 things are given to us as invisible assets, things that we can use within our spiritual life. He gives us everything we need according to the riches of his grace. That's what it says. Everything we need at the time that he's ready for it, not when we're ready for it. So if things are all messed up right now, and, you know, and you're wondering, where's God? I promise you, he'll deliver when he's ready. When it's just the perfect time, there's a saying. He's never early. He's never late. He's always right on time. 
The first three that we covered last week, number one was access to God. Romans 5, 2. Ephesians 2.18 and 3.12, Hebrews 4.16, and Hebrews 10, 19 through 20. He also gave us the baptism of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12.13. Galatians 3. 26 through 28 and Ephesians 4 5 the third thing he gave us was the unique availability of divine power Ephesians 6 10 and Acts 1 8 I'm gonna go over those three one more time number one access to God Romans 5 2 Ephesians 2.18, Ephesians 3.12, Hebrews 4.16, and Hebrews 10.19-20. 2. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12.13, Galatians 3.26-28, and Ephesians 4.5. Number 3. The unique availability of His power, Ephesians 6.10, and Acts 1.8. Everybody get those? Can I go through the three categories of power? I have the third one, but not one and two. And it had to do with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Okay, so yeah, I have Holy Spirit. So it will be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. The, each one, we've covered the each individual items and in other teachings. Okay. But it was just a touch on there. The Thank fourth you. thing that he gives us has to do with this last song. But there's a word at the beginning of it that you might not hear or have heard before. It's called efficacious, E-F-F-I-C-A-C-I-O-S. -F -F efficacious, his efficacious grace. Does anybody know what efficacious means? Effective. Efficacious. Effective. It's a ten cent word, but it's effective. Effectively. With effectiveness. His effic as efficacious grace is grace that God gives to us who have made a non meritorious decision to believe in Christ. A non meritorious decision means the work that He did was good enough for our salvation and we didn't earn it. Or we didn't work for it. It's a gift. In efficacious grace, God the Holy Spirit makes our faith in Christ effective for salvation. Salvation only becomes a reality when God the Holy Spirit makes a person's faith in Christ alone effective and real. There's only the potential for salvation in common grace in which God the Holy Spirit makes the gospel understandable. It's by His grace that we can even understand the gospel. The Bible says that a man can't understand the things of the Spirit, but the gospel is the one thing that they have a right to. That's the first gift He gives us. Efficacious grace takes place when the omnipotence of God, the power of God, the Holy Spirit, makes a spiritually dead person's faith in Christ valid for effective, for salvation. How much faith is needed for salvation? Anyone? Mustard seed. Bingo. How big is a mustard seed? Tiny. Tiny. How's your faith now? You still have that tiny little faith? Oh, no. He has brought you through hell and back, and now your faith is this big versus the mustard seed. He wants to make it bigger every day until your last day. His goal is to mature you. How many times have you heard people say, don't pray for patience? There's a reason why. It hurts. It does. Pray for the gift of patience. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. 
The moment we understand this grace, it's very, people have a hard time. How many times have you bought dinner for someone and they wanted to give you money for it? Or, or, or they try and do something in return to try and pay you back. Let me ask you a question. If I called you on the phone and said, Billy, how would you like a thousand dollars? Come on over for it. I have a million. I'll be right there. He'd be right there, right? And he comes over and he knocks on the door. And as soon as he opened the door, I said, "Okay, Billy, if you want that thousand dollars, do me a favor. You see all those bushes right there? Would you trim those for me? Is that a gift? No, it's a reward. You have to work for it. That is not." salvation and that is not grace if it was if that was grace then Ephesians 2 8 through 9 which I better turn would not be true for by what grace what's grace unmerited favor which means what it's a gift for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. Do you see? It's not of you that you saved yourself. You needed a savior. You are a sinner. And you need a savior. The world doesn't understand this message. They don't think they need a savior. But we do need a savior. Every single day we need his grace. Every day. There's not a day goes by we don't. It says it is the gift of God. It's a gift. If you paid for it, you work for it. It's free. He paid the price. Not as a result of works. That no one should boast. If you're saved because what you did, that means you have a right to boast. Look at how I get to go to heaven. But that's not grace. Go to 2 Corinthians 4. It is by grace that we're saved. It's by grace that we have access to God. It, it, we're the only, we're the only, 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 only people in this time period filled with the Holy Spirit. We've gone over that in the past. That's one of the gifts we get. And we have his power to do all the work that he needs us to do. That's his grace. 2 Corinthians 6. Starting at verse 1. Two six. And working together with him, we also urge you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, at the acceptable time, I listened to you. What did he listen to? Can I tell you what he listened to? This is what he listened to for me. I'm not happy anymore. I don't know what to do. I know all the mistakes I've made. And all those mistakes, I want to be washed away. I want to start all over. I want to do the right thing. Give me a chance. Let me do it. And I heard the gospel. And I received it. When I heard all the things, I'll never forget that day. He was reminding me all the things that I've done. This sermon was called Why God is So Good. I remember I had headphones on. It was, I, I, it's kind of to make a long story short, it's always hard for me to do. My, uh, my father in law at the time, his pastor needed a sound system. Because I knew music, he asked me to get it for him. So we went to the store, set it up in his house, 
got it working. He said, well, what's going to happen Sunday when I go to set up? What if there's a problem? Would you come and set it up? I said, fine. I had no idea what God was about to do. And I set him up and I had the headphones. He said, make sure it's recording. So I had the headphones on. He starts the sermon, why God is so good. I said, yeah, you took my mother, you took my father away from me. Anyone that I've ever tried to love has turned their back on me. Why would I think that you're good? And I laughed. That was the last laugh I ever took as an, unbel as an unbeliever. Because he began in this sermon to say all those things that you've been through, I put you through them for a reason, to strengthen you, to prepare you for a great plan. If you want all of those bad things that you did, to be wiped away, and you can start new and fresh, would you take it? There was only one answer I could come up with. Yes, because he reminded me of all the things, the people that I mistreated, the bad decisions that I made, for all that to be washed away, and I could start fresh, brand new. That's good news. And I had the headphones on, I was in tears. I said, I believe. And, he, and the pastor began to explain what Christ did for me and began to share his grace that, that even that, that he went through to become saved. And at the end of the sermon, I had no choice, none, no choice but to accept it. Now, all of us have gone through the same thing. I, I think I can say I know you now. You've been through the same situation. You were asked a question and you answered it. And you accept it. And the moment you accept it, he's giving you these things by grace to help you, not to hurt you. I didn't want to cut my hand right in the spot that was going to make me have to lift and carry. But yesterday I barely felt it. I was able to do all that needed to be done. He provided grace on my hand. My back, I should be tore up. I'm not. Only my shoulder is. But that doesn't stop me from doing that. I can still do it. It hurts, but I can do it. It's by His grace that I can do that. How many times have you woken up? <coughs> right, brother? And you ask her. I'm sideways. That's what I do. My back, I get twisted, and I, and I walk sideways. Once I have some ice on it, it loosens up and I get better. But the fact that I can walk, even if it's crooked, is by His grace. The fact that you don't need a cane anymore is by His grace. The fact that you don't drink anymore is by grace. The fact that she hasn't killed you yet is by grace. Thank God for that. The fact that we have this building, that everything we have is according to His grace. The fact that you have healthy children and rambunctious and filled with energy. The fact that we have children and the means to take care of them, to provide for them. Do you think he would have given us this building if we couldn't take care of those people? He gave it to us because of his grace. Yes, we're working for it. But we don't deserve it. And we didn't earn it. That is his grace. At the acceptable time, I listened to you, he said. I heard your petitions. And on the day of salvation, at that moment, I helped you, you, you. On that day, each one of us have a different day, right? We got stories in the Bible, thousands have saved at one time. Paul's missionary journey, only three got saved. Many, many ministries would have called that a failure because they count noses, but it was a success. If that man last night that walked into our church, three sheets to the wind, if he wakes up this morning, if he does, he might not. He might be in God's hands. He's a believer, I asked him. But he was drunk. 
You know why? He's been hurt. He's made bad decisions. And he's paying for them dearly. But by grace, after a full night of working, I had enough energy to tell him, Brother, God loves you. He's, I can't tell you, ask Bodhi how many times he said that. I know what I'm doing is wrong, but I can't stop. That's why he needs a savior. It's easy for me to go, you drunk, get out of here. But what if the pastor, before I got said, said, hey, sinner, get out of here. He didn't. He said, come in. And God had his way with him. See, we get in God's way. We try and do God's job because we think we're all that. Because we're saved. We're blessed. We're so anointed to be disappointed. His grace is sufficient for every situation that we go through. Every one of them. And on the day of salvation, I helped you. Behold, now. When? Now. now. When's now? Right this minute. Right this minute. If, if we had somebody here who I thought wasn't saved, I would have given a gospel invitation. Have you noticed, when have I started any of my services recently with a gospel invitation? You know why? Because I know y'all are saved. How do I know that? Because by the t-shirts you wear? No. By the fruit that you display? No. All I have to do is listen to you. I don't need to see fruit. I can listen to you. And I can, I can, I can talk with you in a matter of moments. You praise the only name worthy to be praised. Only those who are saved can do that. Now, I know there are a lot of people who are unsaved, who say Jesus Christ all the time. But there's a difference. You think he knows? Of course he does. Does he strike them down right there when they use his name in vain? No. Could he? Yes. Does he? No. Why? Grace. I don't know about your language, but mine has significantly improved over the last 12 years. I can absolutely guarantee you. God was so kind one time, he sent a DVD of me at the FM station back in 1992. Oh my goodness, MFGD, all the, I was like, whoa! And when I said GD, oh my goodness. Did he check my spirit? He said, do you see? And you thought it was all about the girls and the music. What a joke. Sure, you had your fun. But look at, look at a video now. Look at what comes out of your mouth now. It isn't because I went to Bible college that I talked like this. He convicted me. He said, I need you to change because I need you to represent me to that. Now, I gave you a sense of, I almost lost my sense of humor. as Pam. I became very serious at one point. I thought that's what God wanted. Oh, no, he gave me the nutty personality for a reason. Because somehow that reaches people. What reached Joe was my crazy personality. And now he's moving here. He'll be here September 2nd. He's one of those, he's one of those Sparta Bible Church exterior members who's kind of on the outside, who comes in and prays for us and, and, and watches and learns and grows. He's so excited. He's going to be here the day after our grand opening. I wish he was going to be here sooner, but that's okay. But anyway, the point is, again, by his grace, he uses our personalities. He uses all the power that he gives us to perform his will at his time, at the acceptable time. We read now, it says now, behold, now is the day of salvation. For someone in this world, right now, someone is getting saved. Right now, this very second. We can, there are all these statistics on how many people die every second. How many births every second. How many people have birthdays today. The fact is, is that a real birthday is not their first birth, but their second birth. Even the Bible says it's better to celebrate one's death than one's birth. Why? Because you die to yourself and you become living for him. I can look at each one of you 
and I've known you for some time now. You I'm just getting to know. But I've talked to each one of you on the phone at some point. And it is by his grace that we can talk. Katie's so funny, I have to share one thing with you if you don't mind. Karen sent me a text saying, hey, can you call Katie? She needs to talk to somebody, but she's kind of concerned because she doesn't come a lot. He chose this nutbag to be your pastor. And I'm available 24 hours a day. If you choose to use me, that's up to you. If you get my voicemail, just leave a message. Eventually, I'll get back to you. But most of the time, I answer. Guess what? You have more than me. When you accept me, you also accept that. And see, if my heart of love comes across to you, it needs to come across to them too. Sometimes it won't. Sometimes I won't be patient. You should have seen me yesterday. <laughs> I was running around the new church with a broom in between my legs. Look, judge me all you want. But the fact is, that's how I can relieve that stress. Bodhi is a very particular person. If I said, Bodhi, I want to move my Bible from here to here, he'd say, now hold on one second before you do that. Now let's think. To move it here, we've got to carry it from here. How many steps? One. Look, that is not me. That's it. I can't. He and, and I lost my patience. I could have strangled him, choked him out. Real easy would have taken maybe seven seconds. I'm out of help you. I know you. <laughs> so instead, huh? now you know I just didn't work in a crowd. He said he, you, were running around like you took him with your head cut off. You. Yeah. He had to leave. Absolutely. <laughs> But the fact is, everybody is more than wouldn't have all been going crazy. But everybody's different. I chose to release that tension by grabbing a broom and going, Yay! And I got done and I felt a thousand times better. And then I said, I'm so happy, I'm like a witch in a broom factory. I know that's kind of crazy. Don't judge me too harshly. But that's the only thing I could think of at that moment without losing my mind. <laughs> and it made everybody laugh. And it, it, it released the tension. We had some a little bit after that, but that's all right. Again, we're all trying to do the right thing. But we forget it's by His grace that we have floor tile. It's by grace that we have sheet rock. We don't even have sandpaper. But God's going to provide it. I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know where, I don't know why. But I know we will. We don't even have a projector yet. We got a big, huge screen. God, pro why did God provide a projector, but no, or a screen, but no projector? He would. He's going to provide one. We don't even have a sound system. I could give you a list of things that are not ready by next week. But the most important is ready. And that's us. We're ready, even if the building's not. And I know the moment on Saturday. See, we know that Saturday is our yard sale. Don't discount that event. That's our first service. He's going to use that. He's going to bring people who don't want to come on Sunday because they go to church somewhere else. But God's going to bring them Saturday. And while we're set up in front of the church with the church doors open, watch them. Come and look. And you're going to say, would you like a tour? Come on, I'll give you a tour. Don't worry about your station. God will, someone will step up. Give them a tour of the church. Let them see it. Set up tables inside. You'll have people coming in. We could do that as well. That's a great idea. Wasn't there going to be a bake sale too? Wasn't it going to be yard there, uh, We talked about a bake sale, a barbecue. We talked about a lot of stuff. And, and I think at the last minute we'll figure it all out. But in the meantime, the goal is that they're going to come in because God's going to bring them. And matter of fact, we haven't even got the picture frames yet. We got the pictures figured out, but not the frames yet. But we'll work on that. Well, again, all these the formal won't let anything go. Don't worry. She gives us a little bit of a time. We have, we, and we have trust me. We have more than one foreman here. We have a few different foremans. <laughs> See, all watch your eyes. But the point is, by His grace which is very effective, efficacious. 
we will have all the things we need. That's what he does. He's God. Efficacious grace is just one of the seven salvation ministries of God the Holy Spirit. Now, I know that, that one of the things we haven't taught yet is the Holy Spirit. We actually have. But I haven't designated this is one on the Holy Spirit. But we're going to. But right here is a portion of that teaching. Seven salvation ministries of God the Holy Spirit. I will go into these in detail once we get through this 40 things, then I'm going to go into detail of these seven, because these are the actual seven ministries of the Holy Spirit that the Bible talks about. And they're all contained within the 40 things received at the moment of salvation. The first one, which we covered, is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The second is the indwelling of God the Holy Spirit. Three, the filling of God the Holy Spirit. Four, the sealing ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number one, the baptism. Two, the indwelling. Three, the filling. You know there's a difference? There is. The Bible talks about the differences between them. Sometimes we like to, to think what we know about them, but what does the Bible say about them? That's all we care about. Number four, the sealing ministry. So you got the baptism, the indwelling, the filling, the sealing. You have efficacious grace, which is what we're covering. Regeneration and the distribution of spiritual gifts. I can't wait till we get to that one. That is one of the most misunderstood things in the Bible, is the gifts. My goodness, everybody has an opinion on God's gifts. But God has an opinion, and he's going to share it with his word. And if anybody has a right to say that certain gifts exist and certain gifts don't, haven't read the Bible. Some say, well, these do and those don't. But these do and those don't. But those do and those don't. I don't care what you think. I care what the Bible says. And that's what we're going to open up. And if, if you have an opinion about what you think exists and doesn't exist, and you can show me a scripture, I'll, I'll fine. But if you can't, then all you have to do is you have a choice of going, well, that's what the Bible says. Do I accept it or not? Do I want to add to it or do I want to take away from it? I can't tell you the arguments that people go through about tongues. Oh my goodness gracious. What is the matter with them? Who made you judge? Who? There's one judge, God. You will notice in our prayer meetings, if anybody wants to speak in tongues, if that's what they feel led to do, I'll never stop you. It's not my business. If God tells you to do it, do it. If he tells you not to do it, don't do it. Everybody has an opinion about it. They like to judge. The fact is, what does the Bible say about it? That's what it comes down to, and we will cover that. There's gifts of, of, of healing. There's all kinds of spiritual gifts. There's even spiritual gifts that aren't even being taught today that are in the Bible. Like the gift of encouragement. That is the most, the most unrecognized gift in church history. You, you want to see a sample of the gift of encouragement? You want to see it? Let's see, who can I show it to? Here. Here it is, right here. <laughs> why the elders lay their hands. This was the reason. There was power in this. See? See? There's nothing miraculous about that. I know. You see? That's a gift. And it keeps on giving, similar to the germs I'm passing on to you right now. Forgive me. <laughs> but it's a gift. And it's free. It doesn't, I don't want anything returned. You need to have to put your hand up. It's a gift. That's what it's all about. That's power. There's power in it. How many times have you been upset 
and someone has given you a, 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 a spiritual hug, I call it. They say, are you all right? That's a hug. Anybody have any hand sanitizer? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. I wash my hands before service, I promise you. The point is, is that the gifts that God gives us, they're numerous. It's more than seven. It's more than 20. But we like to put God in a box. God can't be in a box because he created the box. He is the box. His box is far bigger than what we can do. So just know, whatever denomination you came from, whatever teaching you've had before, it is not my job to judge what you know. I never will. If, if you believe that I need to have a small little ponytail here to be holy, guess what? That's your belief. And I have a right to do it or not. Just like you have a right. Everything I teach comes from here so that you can't argue with me. I don't want to argue with you. I'm too tired to argue. All I'm going to do is go here and let you Battle with God. He's got unlimited energy. He will wear you out. Ask you. She knows. He will wear you out. He breaks you. He does wear you out. But he does it because he, he is great. That's where you learn your greatest lessons. That's what it's all about. There's a galaxy that's 180 billion light years across outside our galaxy. God created the heavens and the earth. How can you put a God that size in a box? You can't. The fact that he created suspenders to hold my pants up is a miracle. <laughs> That's a miracle to me. And we will get into miracles and signs and wonders too. I can absolutely guarantee you one thing. 90%, 90 plus of the miracles and signs and wonders you see today are for man's glory. Not for God's. A miracle? I can tell you a miracle firsthand. When did we know about this new building? A month ago, less than a month ago. We've done more work in that building in less time. Think about how much time we've actually spent total in there and how much he's done. It's funny, yesterday, Judy was on the phone with her sister bragging on the church about what an incredible job we did. Well, they really haven't gotten anything done. It's been eight hours. <laughs> I, I'm paraphrasing. I'm not. It was such an encouragement. I wanted to shoot myself in the head. I was like, I don't need that right now, Lord. But the fact is, she was telling the truth. Compared to other nights, we weren't as productive. Why? Because we weren't prepared. I learn, if I sit down at the building, everyone sits down. They say, what the? Come on now. Now, when I'm not there, y'all work. Don't, come on. I would but think, Chef, you were sitting down. There's not a question. I didn't say everybody. The point is, is that's what leadership is about. I couldn't even get Scott last night. He, when he was done, he was done. And I, I said seven times, didn't matter. He was done. He was wore out. He started really early. Yeah, he did. He showed up at 9 o'clock to do work on it. Was he getting paid? No, none of us have gotten paid. If anything, it's cost us. But think about how much as a church we have personally spent in money. Forget time. Did you do it for that reason? No, you did it because the Lord told you to. He said, remember, all the money you have, I gave you. Everything that I gave you, it's yours. But I gave it to you. And you can't outgive God. No. And let me tell you something. I never worry about this. You know why? Because God always makes provision for us. If I would have said to you the day we had the building, okay, I want you to put your offerings for the building in here, it would have been one sixteenth of what you actually have already put in. 
because the motivation was this. See, that's why we didn't have a building fund. Instead, God put it in your hearts to just give according to the riches of your grace and his grace. We had no ceiling tiles. Now we have 40. Does it matter who gave it? No. We have four sheets of plywood to make three rows of tables. Because Pastor wants these dark tables. Why? Because I want you comfortable. I want you to have room when it's set up and people come in and they see this room full of tables that are 24 feet long by 16 deep. And they have to sit down and they didn't bring a notebook and they didn't bring a Bible. What you're going to see is this. <laughs> what do I do with this space? All of a sudden, someone's going to hand them a Bible. They're going to open it. Someone's going to give them a notepad. We're going to, they're going to have a notepad. And they're going to say, wow, that was pretty cool. And they're going to write notes. That's Sparta Bible Church. If there's two things about Sparta Bible Church, you know now we study the Bible. Imagine that. That's our number one priority. What a concept. By His grace, we have that. Number five. Now we went through the seven. One more time. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. The indwelling of God the Holy Spirit. The filling of God the Holy Spirit. The sealing ministry of the Holy Spirit. Efficacious grace. Regeneration. And the distribution of spiritual gifts. The fifth thing that we receive from God. And I think that's all we're going to cover. Is election. How many of you voted last year? How many of you were tortured for two years about the election? They're already starting on 2016 now. Man, you thought this last election was long and drawn out. This one's going to be twice as long and drawn out. Election. When I say the word election, automatically you think of the election. Election is the expression of... Of the sovereign, anyone remember what the word sovereign means from our teaching? All authority. The authority, the sovereign will of God for the church age believer. Election is the expression of the sovereign will of God for the church age believer. God wills his highest and very best for every believer. He wills his highest and very best for every believer. Not just the one that serves seven days a week, that makes a big, fat, gigantic salary. Not just the one who doesn't make a single penny and, and, and cleans toilets. Not the person who stands outside and says, good morning, welcome to Sparta Bible Church. For every believer, his, he wills the very best for us. And he deserves the very best out of us. Election is the expression of the sovereign will of God for the church age believer. God wills his highest and best for every believer. We were just in Ephesians. Let's go back to Ephesians 1. Starting at verse 3. Ephesians 1, starting in verse 3. What's the first word you read? Praise. Oh, praise and blessed. I was just about to say, those that have praise, they actually got that right in the Greek. That's very good. It means praise, not blessed. But even if you have blessed, it's okay. It also means praise. Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with certain spiritual blessing. Every. You ready? Every one it says. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. 
All your blessings are ready for you. They're waiting. They're right there. Everything you've ever needed is right there. Just as he chose us in him. When? When did he choose us? Before. What have we been studying on Wednesday night? It was before that. That he chose us. And prepared all the blessings before the foundation of the world. When Christ was on the cross, he had you in mind. He knew when he was up there and he was connected. Now, it's not a coincidence, just so you know, that, that Richard built this this height. It's for illustration. We have to bear this daily, don't we? He had us in mind when we were on. I can't even mind you. But before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him, what? What's the next two words? In love. In love. Ooh. In love. He predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself according to the kind intention of his will. What would be another word for kind intention of his will? Five letters. Starts with G, ends with E. Hey, that's like a little trivia game that you play. That'd be kind of cool for Friday nights. To the praise of his glory, his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Every believer is to know that his election and function is centered around grace. Go to Colossians. And we'll be finished. Colossians, Colossians. Three. Starting in verse twelve. Colossians three twelve. And so, as those who have been chosen of God, who is that? Who's been chosen of God? Those who do what? Those that accept the salvation. It's only to those. Who or when? Chosen when? Before the foundations of the earth. So they who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of what? Compassion. Kindness, humility, gentleness, and bearing with one another and ah, each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. And beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Oh, we wonder why he gave us the building. Oh, I can tell you why. The bond of unity. Right before the building, by God. You could have divided us in 14 pieces. But by His grace, we are bonded together in unity, in love. Which is the perfect bond of unity. <clears throat> and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. To which indeed you were called in how many bodies? One. And be what? Thankful. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. How does it dwell in you? What are we doing right now? We're studying the Bible. The word is richly dwelling within us. Thank goodness for that. With all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. <coughs> with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with thankfulness in your hearts. Let me ask you a question. When you heard... I am a real American, fight for the rights of every man. I am a real American, fight for what's right 
fight for your lives. Bum, bum, bum. When it comes crashing down and it hurts inside. Bum, 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 bum. You gotta take a stand. You gotta take a stand. Uh, go look up the lyrics to Real American. Just because Hulk Hogan used it as a theme song, let me tell you something. If you hurt my friends, it'll hurt my pride. I gotta be a man. I gotta stand and fight. The Bible says to stand firm, does it not? Let anybody go up against you. They're going to have a six foot four, 280 pound angry man who loves the Lord on them. And I will love them till they puke. <laughs> I love you guys. It's my job to love you, to protect you, to guide you, and to correct you. But how can I correct you if I'm in the wrong? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I am your pastor. God is your shepherd. I'm going to make mistakes. But by his grace, I will learn from them. I know I'm a new pastor. There are a lot of decisions I'm going to make that you might not like or you might not agree with, but you have to trust me. You know, might not want to. And I'm going to make some decisions that are going to make complete sense and that are going to totally... Just jive with you, and you're going to love it. And then I'm going to make other decisions going to get you all messed up. And you're going to be mad at me. You'll get over it eventually. You can't change it. It is what it is. But by his grace, every decision that we make has to be honoring and glorifying the earth. Pastor, why do we need tables? Why don't we just have chairs? Pastor, why don't we have service there on Wednesday instead? Why can't we just do this? Pastor, why wouldn't we? Pastor, how about this? And pastor, I think this. And, and pastor, and pastor, and pastor, and pastor, and pastor, and pastor, and praise God that I hear that. It says, let your needs be known to God. But you come to me, which is fine. Always come to me. You can. But I'm going to ask him, Lord, what do you want us to do? That's all I do. And he says, this is what I want you to do. And sometimes, by his grace, he'll tell me to tell you something that the look on your face is award-winning. And I know, I'm about to get hit on this one. Boom. And I have to deliver it anyway. It's God's job by his grace to protect me from that. And sometimes he does it. He lets you hit me. And I don't like it. And I cry about it. And I whine about it. I'm like, look, I don't deserve that. I'm a pastor. Yes, you do deserve that. He says, that's right. You're a pastor. He said, and you need to teach these people by example. What grace and suffering is all about. And I'm going to do it through your life. And each and every one of you, we suffer together by His grace. Sixteen, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. When you heard the song, look what the Lord has done. I don't know about you, but I was thanking him up and down for all that he's done. That's what we were doing with spiritual songs. Anyone says, if anybody says that worship is not a requirement for the church, the fact is that scripture right there says it's okay. <coughs> it's all right. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God, the Father. God's will is that you carry out his plan so that you can receive tremendous blessings and glorify him throughout your life. Election bestows upon us special privileges. It is the plan of God for believers only and includes equal privilege, our royal priesthood, an equal opportunity. God is an equal opportunity employees. Father God, we thank you so much for this teaching. 
We thank you for this service. We thank you for this time that you've given us to be regenerated by the washing of your word. We look forward to our continued teaching of Genesis on Wednesday. We look forward to our yard sale on Saturday and to our grand opening on Sunday. Father, we know at that time we will have our first service with communion. We know that there will be a lot of excitement this week. I can't wait till we can pray. Let's make it grab hands. Let's do a building. And look at one another and look around and see all that you've done. And we know that this is a new chapter. A chapter that none of us have the pages on. And we don't know where it's going to go. But we know from your word that you're faithful. And we know that there will be people who will be coming who are hurt. And Father, I pray with everything in me, whether it's one or three hundred that you bring who are hurting, that you will be glorified by all that we do, and that everything that we do to this building this afternoon will be according to your plan. We ask that you continue to open every door that needs to be opened, close every door that needs to be closed. Don't let us go in any areas that we don't need to. Let us keep our focus on your word. I love it. Every person, new person that comes to that building, they always say, what's Sparta Bible Church? They know church, but there's something different, and they don't know what it is. But you give us the words to share with them what it is. And we can never thank you enough for your faithfulness in that. Strengthen us. Watch over our bodies today as we do the rest of this work. And Father, I thank you for these people who you brought in your lives. Continue to strengthen them. Continue to provide for their needs. Continue to bless them according to your will and strengthen them. And for those that couldn't be here today, Father, we know that's not that they didn't want to be here. It's they chose not to. And we love them all the same. And as we see them on Facebook, we'll continue to be Sparta Bible Church. We'll continue to love on them and encourage them and invite them again and tell them about what's going on. We can already see what you're doing through the 151 people that have liked our page on Facebook and made comments. And Father, I just ask that everything relating to this building and this church is yours. And you have control over all of it. We thank you so much for this day and for our children. And we love you so very much. And we ask these things in Christ's name.